Hi, Clover Creek artists. Today our book is titled, Never Let a Dinosaur Scribble, written and illustrated by Diane Alber. I recently got a pet dinosaur. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. And everyone keeps telling me, never let a dinosaur scribble. Why would anyone say such a thing? I mean, dinosaurs are so strong and powerful, so why can't they scribble? I thought if I gave him just one crayon, what could go wrong? Well, I'll tell ya, he took off running towards the wall. We don't scribble on the walls, only paper, I yelled. Thank goodness my dinosaur has a short attention span. Just before he was going to scribble on the wall, he noticed a couple stones instead. He started to scribble on one of the stones, which was great, but there was just one problem. He really couldn't see the scribble at all. I could tell he had another idea. He went to grab the paint. This wasn't going to end well. But surprisingly, it didn't make as big a mess as I thought. He just painted quietly his little stone and it turned out awesome. But then he got another idea. He wanted to paint dinosaur-sized stones. It didn't take long before he was rolling boulders into the room, one after another. It had become the biggest rock pile I had ever seen. And the way he painted the rocks was truly extraordinary. But if you couldn't see my floor or my bed anymore, I had to find a place for this rock pile and quick, then I heard a noise down the hall. This was it. I was going to be in so much trouble. I popped my head out of the door. My mom was standing right there. Before my mom could say anything, I started to explain the mess she was about to see. Well, it all started when I heard to never let a dinosaur scribble, but I had to find out why. So I gave my dinosaur a crayon and he, then he ran towards the wall with it. Thank goodness he got distracted with some small stones and started scribbling on them instead, but he couldn't see the scribble at all, so he got some paint. He loved it so much that he got bigger stones, giant ones even, and it made a big mess and I'm sorry. My mom peeked around the corner and smiled. You didn't make a mess. You made some spectacular stone art. When I turned around, there was just a little pile of stones on my table. No huge boulders, no gigantic rock pile, but still some of the best art ever. At the, all this time, people wanted to stop dinosaurs from scribbling. It could be because they try and draw on walls or make a gigantic rock pile. But if my dinosaur had never scribbled, he would have never learned how to make this amazing stone art. So next time you hear, never let a dinosaur scribble. Just remember, all great art starts with a scribble and even dinosaurs have to start somewhere too. The end. Hi Clover Creek artist. Now we're on to finding our art on a rock or your scribble on a rock. Um, I had previously painted these. These are some rocks I found on um, my beach walk the other day. I brought them home, I wiped them with a Lysol wipe and let them dry for one day. And then I started painting them. We have some trees and a forest here. Purple, my favorite color, and M for Masagi. Here I have one started, and how I start my rocks is I outline them with a permanent marker of where I'm gonna add my paint. If you don't have paint at home, you can use permanent markers. You can get creative with what kind of material you're gonna color your rock with. So I have my outline here. I'm gonna add a few other designs. In fact, I 
I'm kind of liking how the permanent marker is looking on this one. I might leave this one in permanent marker. But I already have my paint out, so I don't want to waste it. Remember in the art classroom, we don't waste things. Maybe I'll go with orange. This is a little brighter. Hope you're thinking of some ideas what you might paint on your rock. Now I'm going to grab my paintbrush. Purple, of course. You'll want to do probably one or two coats of paint or two layers. Sometimes, like on the rock with the M, I had to do three just to get that dark color to stand out. This is acrylic paint that I'm using, not watercolor. Watercolor would fade too fast and wouldn't have a more permanent stay like acrylic. After these are painted and dried, I'm going to return them back down to the beach walk. Maybe make someone's day a little surprise if they find a painted rock. I'm kind of liking the lighter purple against the darker purple, it's having a nice contrast effect. We'll see if it dries that way. Sometimes when you paint and it dries, it turns a different color. All art that you create brings something to you. I'm going to leave some of those uh, permanent marker details because I think it helps this rock stand out. I hope you have a great time creating your rock art if you're able to. You could even just create some scribble art on a piece of paper if you don't um, go out and gather rocks. Have a great day. Miss you guys.